Good morning, Abotai. Uh, since Rosh Hashanah is such a significant and symbolic day, since it's the beginning, the head of the year, so there are many behaviors that we put forth on Rosh Hashanah that are supposed to be significant and misugal for Hatzlacha in the coming year. So first of all, Agon Kafachaim writes that on not only on Rosh Hashanah, but for Aseret Yimet Teshuvah, and some continue until Shemini Atzeret, the Hamotzi, the bread of Hamotzi, is dipped not only into salt, but into honey or sugar as well. Now our minhag is to do it in sugar as well, not instead of salt, but together, meaning one after another. First you dip it three times in the salt, uh, in, the, in the salt, and then three times in the sugar, in which case a person would be yotze, both minhagim. Now, with regards to the simanim, the simanim, just to get it clear, because there are a lot of people that are not so clear on them, this is not necessarily the order, different machzurim have different orders, but the simanim are as follows. There are tmarim, there are dates. Then there is um, rubia, which is black-eyed peas. Then there is karti, which is leek. Then there is uh, silka, which is spinach. Then there is, uh, what I miss? Then there is rimon, which is a, uh, which, uh, a kara, which is a gourd or pumpkin, some sort of squash. Then you have rimon, which is a pomegranate. A tapuach, the Benish Chai says that, you know, unfortunately, uh, there's a song otherwise, but according to the Benish Chai, the apple is not supposed to be cooked on honey. The Benish Chai says you shouldn't have honey on Rosh Hashanah at all. Because honey is gold, and gold represents dinim, which is not a good idea on Rosh Hashanah. On the contrary, you're supposed to have sugar, sugar which is white. And therefore the Benishchai says you're supposed to cook the apple in sugar before Rosh Hashanah to caramelize it and to serve it like that. Tapuach mevushal besukar. Then you have the Rosh Kevis. You have the head of a lamb's head. Now, also, there are different minagim about what to eat and what not to eat on Rosh Hashanah. Obviously, a person, the Geonim say, a person should not eat something that is overly spicy, bitter, or sour. Similarly, the Ramah brings down that people, there's minhag, not to eat walnuts on Rosh Hashanah, or other nuts for that matter, but especially walnuts, because egoz is gematriachet, plus nuts um, cause a lot of phlegm, and a person's going to have to be clearing his throat the entire tefillah, which is not conducive not to his tefillah, and not to the tefillah of other people. Also, the uh, Birke Yosef, Manan Achida writes in Birke Yosef, there are some who have the minhag not to eat fish on Rosh Hashanah. Some do, some don't. Again, everybody should follow their own, their own uh, minhag. Agaon Kafachayim brings down that it is appropriate not to eat red grapes on Rosh Hashanah because they symbolize dinim. Rather, if a person wants to eat grapes on Rosh Hashanah, he should only have green grapes, not red ones. Now, all of these are wonderful simanim with regards to things that we eat. Also, the the Mekubalim bring down that a person should not spend his time wasted on Rosh Hashanah. A person should always be in motion, praying, learning, saying Tehilim. The Matei Ephraim brings down that some people have the Minhag to finish Tehilim twice on Rosh Hashanah. There are 150 chapters in Tehilim times two is 300, which is the Gematria of Kaper, the Gematria of Atonement. person also, if he's busy with Tehilim, he's not busy speaking all sorts of wasted words in Lashon Hara. Also, the Ramah brings down, based on Yerushalmi that we can't find, the Ramah says that it is inappropriate to sleep on Rosh Hashanah. Because if a person does so, first of all, that shows a lack of care about Hashem's judgment. Number two, it also could impact the person to have a sleepy year, whatever that means, which is not a good thing. The Minag is to wake up already at Alot HaShachar, already at about 5.30, a little bit later, on Rosh Hashanah, to make sure you're ready for the tefillah and learning and preparing for the Yom Adin. Nevertheless, Rabbi Chaim Vital writes in Sha'ar Kavanot that he saw his Rebbe, the Ariya Kadosh, take a short nap after Chatzot, after Halachic midday of Rosh Hashanah, after Shacharit, Tkiot, and Musaf, the Ariya Kadosh took a short nap on Rosh Hashanah. So a person, if he wants to do that too, but not to sleep off the rest of the day, obviously, the most important segula, the Ben Ishai says in Parashat Nitzavim, is for the entire 48 hours of Rosh Hashanah, not to get angry once. If a person can be just completely, you know, calm and joyful throughout Rosh Hashanah, that's a wonderful, wonderful siman for the rest of the year. During the rest, other years, we only have 48 hours of Rosh Hashanah. This year, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us a gift. We don't have 48 hours, we have 72. So we have 72 hours of pure bliss, of pure simcha, from the beginning of Rosh Hashanah until the end. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu for Ktiva Tova, Shana Tova